Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Hollywood Interviews. Tonight we have a very special guest, Anna Carroll. She's actually one of my uh, former trainers, which may actually become you know present again because now she's doing things virtually. Ah! <laughs> really amazing. You know, put me through it, but definitely got the work done. Uh, and she has an amazing story, amazing journey. If you go back and look at some of the pictures, you'll be you know, shocked at what she's accomplished. So tonight we're going to give her the spotlight and have her um, explain, you know, who she is, her journey and why things are, uh, you know, why fitness is important and currently what she's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, all right. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, it's uh, kind of weird to see myself uh, talking about myself because I'm usually uh, just teaching, but uh, my name is Anna Carroll. And uh, I am a yoga instructor, fitness instructor, um, fitness enthusiast, uh, and uh, I've been doing it for a long while. And uh, now I am ready to take it to the next level and really push my business. Um, I am trying to get uh, my Yoga Contigo, uh, uh, Yoga en Español uh, business started. So um, I've been teaching yoga for, um, eight years been practicing for 17 um and i've been into fitness for i want to say the past six years uh i uh, i was not a very fit person um maybe there's some pictures somewhere around there that you're gonna get to see but uh yeah i had a round face and a round body which is nothing wrong with that but uh, um, I was not you really, the, yeah, I was very different. I looked very different. And uh, so my background, I had been working uh, in the fast food industry for 17 years. And uh, so that came to an end. And uh, I did not know what to do with my life. I was 37, I believe, at the time. I'll tell you, it's, it's hard to believe that, though, that, that you were not fit because when I um, when I met you and I went to the first class that I had with you, I mean you ran people into the ground, and you're not <laughs> like the biggest person in the world, but you know, I, I mean, I won. So, you had yeah, a lot of fight, I'm a lot gonna... of power, and I, I mean, you were running people into the ground. So when you were telling me, you know, you're in the fast food industry that you had made this huge transformation, I mean that's shocking. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I, I, I've been working. Um, I was a teen mom, right? Came to came to the, the to the United States in '96, and uh, my baby was six months old. And where, uh, where did you come from? Uh, I I'm, I was in Mexico. Uh, I am half Mexican, half Colombian, and uh, I you know I lived in Colombia for. 14 years, came back to Mexico for another four years, and uh, and then I came to the States. So, yeah, no English, um, no English with a baby, and uh, my family was here, so they helped me out. And, uh, yeah, so I started working, you know, my just the regular single mom teen job. You know, I, I, was, I started working at McDonald's, uh, cleaning bathrooms and folding burritos, which... You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, yeah, I uh, I started learning some English. I went to uh, Brookhaven College for ESL uh, for about three months, right? And uh, you learned English in three months? No, no. Oh, I, I was like, wow. I, no, no, no. It was just kind of the basics. And uh, and I started, you know, I had to work more. So then I had to get me a part time, and I really didn't uh, have the time to get back to school, right? Uh, but you know, I would go to the back room to the storage and uh, and look at the boxes, and the boxes would have the name in English and in Spanish, right? So I would, oh. yeah, so I would write, you know, napkin, servietta. So you know, I would just gonna be translating, uh, and, and so I would learn all that. And and I actually, when I was in Mexico, um, I went to high school there, and uh, uh, you know, we just take the basic English, so you know, I, I was not blank with. Yeah. My, English, but you know, I was not able to have a conversation with anybody, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so slowly, I started learning, and uh, and I guess it was just the the again the wanting to the not wanting to stay behind, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and also, I had that in my head that stigma that 
I remember seeing in, in TV, seeing the, the Latino moms bringing their kids with them to translate, right? To the store or to the bank. And uh, <clears throat> that was one of the things that I, I would refuse, you know, I, I am not gonna put my daughter ever through having to translate, you know? So that was kind of like, you know, the little push for me to, to learn, right? And then I started learning the business and then then I became, a, 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 you know, one of the floor managers. And then I kept growing in the business, kept learning more, got interested. Obviously, I started learning more English, uh, kind of losing that fear of. You always had a lot of drive. Like nobody's going to understand me or my accent or whatever. Right. Yeah. You know, there's always that fear of, you know, not performing and, yeah. and you know, just. And uh, so finally I made it to uh, the general manager position. And uh, I worked at one of the busiest restaurants in, I think in the, in, in the region, uh, you know, several states, right? Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it was, I mean, it, it's, it's McDonald's and everybody's kind of like, well, you know, flipping burgers and everything. But if you make it up to, you know the management it's it's great and you get to learn a lot and i learned a lot i learned you know lots of skills and and uh you know personal skills and in, in, in marketing because you know they actually take you to you know send you to school and training and i graduated from hamburger university um you know i didn't even know that was a thing and then you know, found thing. it afterwards you can actually yeah. Wikipedia it in that I actually got a degree in hamburgerology. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I think I heard yes. that it's actually um, a pretty big thing. Yes, I mean they sent you uh, this place is in Oak Brook, Illinois, and they sent you for a whole week of you learning in business. It that's yeah. that's where you go learn business, right? And. Uh, and you know and have some fun too and you know they do a, a whole day of uh you know just making burgers and you know just kind of having contests again other store managers and um and then you graduate and that's when you're supposed to become a store manager right but i was okay. already i was already store manager i had already taken over a store uh because i had gotten the opportunity but uh that's kind of like a must you have to go and in, in uh, graduate from and for this is like three different levels, right? They sent you to, uh, um, you know, two other weeks here in Dallas, you know, at the regional office where you have to. So you spend some hours and, and they uh, give you some college credits. I think I have two or three college credits. Um, Just with, with, yes, with the uh, hamburgerology degree and I have nice. a diploma and yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm very happy, very proud of uh, having worked there. Um, it was it was kind of sour my exit, uh, but then again, you know, uh, never ever ha uh, hard feelings. You know, like I said, I learned lots. And that's that's a big thing. You come from a place of appreciation with everything. Yes, because of the work that you had to do, and then also the fact that you were able to take. Uh, you know, you're looking from the positive side of it. There's a lot that you were able to take from that. Yeah, and you know, and it's that uh, also that dream that you know every Latino has, right? My my American dream, right? We come here, ah. we mostly work at restaurants, right? So I actually got it to the restaurant. I worked at the restaurant, made it up to the management. I was able to get my daughter to graduate. So she graduated from high school. So that's another accomplishment, right? That that we Latinos, that's kind of what what we come here and do for our kids, right? So right when she graduated high school, that's when uh, I got let go of my of my job. So then that's when I was like, what do I do next? Mm -hmm. I was a teen mom. I, I gave my, I gave 17 years to McDonald's and I did not go to school. I did not learn anything in the process. I'm lying. In the process, I actually went to massage school because of that same thought, right? Uh, if I get let go, if I decide to quit, if whatever, I have nothing, right? So that's kind of when my mind started, you know, spinning a little bit and, and, and just kind of trying to gain some knowledge. Um, get a lot of time here. Always building and growing. Uh, 
yeah uh so you know just kind of uh, um um kind of lost my train of thought there but uh with with mcdonald's i like i said i learned i learned lots and uh um once i stopped doing that um you went to the massage to I, the, uh... I did the massage thing but i never got my license it you know it was kind of like it's not my my thing you know uh not my passion uh, but again you know i have a certificate and and i can do something with that right so that mm -hmm. was the mentality then um so then uh you know i got really depressed after losing my job and uh, I started getting into really bad habits and drinking and eating. And that's when I really started gaining weight. And, um, but the drinking really kind of started, you know, kind of getting out of hand. And, uh, my daughter at the time, I think she was 17. Uh, you know, she kind of called me out on that. And so, yeah. uh, immediately I was like, this is it now. I, I got, so that was like, a. uh, a wake up call and slap in the face yeah. yes uh, um, yeah. and you know it was a, a very embarrassing situation right because that's the last thing you want your kid to be the one to tell you hey mom sh sh wake up you know mm -hmm. um, but again you know uh, I, I you know learning learning from uh, you know we parents never stop learning you know so uh you know just kind of thinking about it well you know i gotta gotta do something i cannot stay home forever um so i had been practicing yoga and then you know i thought to myself well you know i'm gonna get into better habits you know just stop drinking i'm gonna start doing yoga and uh you know just start kind of getting my mind in the right place right so what what got you to do the yoga uh well i had already been practicing um that has always been for me, uh, uh, you know, something very interesting. Uh, you know, I've always been interested in um, Indian culture and, you know, all that. And, and yoga to me has always been very, um, I don't know, it's it's magical. You know, I, I, I tell people and I tell the teens that I teach, you know, uh, it's it sounds cliche or it sounds stupid maybe to say, you know, it's magical, but it's just takes you to a different place and a different state of mind and in your body feels great and yeah. and it's just so many changes that happen that you know you feel it brewing inside and yeah, i mean everybody has also their it was it also was the challenge because uh at the time that was hot yoga um the hype the the thing to do oh yes yeah is when hot yoga started so I found uh, there's that magazine, The Observer. Give me just a sec. There's that magazine, The Observer, that um, had a little coupon for this particular yoga shop, right? Ten classes for ten dollars, and it's had yoga. And at the time, I didn't think my English was great. Um, and you know, I was really freaking scared and I was like, all right, so I'm going to get out of my comfort zone. Um, I, I don't do any sports. Um, it's hot yoga. I don't like the heat. I mean, I like the heat, but I don't like the humidity because it's also humid. Uh, and, right then, in Houston. <laughs> and, then the, and the English thing, and oh my gosh, I'm not going to understand. And I don't want them to talk to me because I don't have to have interactions. Right. I go to the first class and I was just like, I want to, I want to do this forever. Oh. That right there. And this was January 4th to not, no, to January 4th, 1999. When wow. I got that class. I, and I mean, that's how I you know it was something and big. I, and I remember the name of my instructor, Angie Hunter, that I don't know if she's ever going to watch this thing, but I always... I always give her credit for you know me falling in love with with yoga. And I mean, it was it was an ama amazing class. It was hot. It was challenging, and that's what it, I was kind of like looking for. That that's was it a Monday, Monday by any chance? Do I? Was it a Monday? 
I have no idea. Um, I just went back to January 4th, 1999. I was like, man, you started on a weekday. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I mean, I, I, it was one of those things, right? I, I remember like time I was, I had short hair, red hair, kind of punkish and a total different set of minds. So first class, I fell in love. And, uh, but it took me 10 years, took me 10 years to get to where I said, well, I'm going to do the, uh, the teacher training. So it, this was again, when I got, uh, fired from my job and oh. then I didn't know what to do. Right. So that's when I was like, okay, so this is the time, right? Um, my daughter is, you know, she graduated, she's fine. Um, you know, okay. Uh, so, you know, things are good, right? This is the time for me to do this. So I, uh, it was kind of expensive, uh, so I couldn't afford it. Uh, so I sent an essay, right? Because they were get, they were gonna give out scholarships. So I sent an essay and I did not get it, right? So then I keep training. Oh, wow. uh, I sent a second time, sent an essay. It did not work, right? Again. So you know, then again, I get discouraged. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, this might not be my thing, uh, you know. So then I go one day to a class and uh, one of my instructors, uh, she tells me, hey, have you applied for the scholarship? And I'm like, are they giving again the scholarships? And this was like within three months, right? It was with from the first one, it was like nine months already. So I had already done three essays. And, uh, and I tell her, you know, I, I just... I don't want another heartbreak. I don't want to do this again. You know, she's like, trust yeah. me, just do it. Just believe it and send it. So, you know, I thought about it, blah, blah. I went back, did the essay, send it on a Friday morning at nine in the morning, got the response Friday at noon that I have gotten the scholarship. So, Congratulations. Yeah. So got got scholarship and I did my teacher training. It was a an intensive uh two hundred hours. It was I believe it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was it was from six in the morning till eight PM, Monday through Friday. But, but did you have to work out during the class or was it mainly all information? Oh no. The morning at, at when we would get there at six in the morning, we would start the day by foam rolling. Oh wow. Well, so if you you've done so and that's pretty much yeah. like like, yeah, you need to do this, but it was kind of like to wake up, right? Do you do you remember when I first came <laughs> to I think your class? I I had to start doing it then because of injuries. Yeah. And um you know, I think one of the biggest things that's neglected is, you know, stretching and getting, you know, your lactic acids out and all that kind of stuff. And they made me start foam rolling and it hurts so I, bad. I, I'm a big advocate on, on foam rolling and stretching, but, you know, mostly that because, you know, I, I noticed the difference after, you know, my teacher training. Like I just... It was a habit, but I was also better, like, oh yeah. my gosh, I just need it. And until the day, I have my foam rollers everywhere. And, uh, you know, it's just self-care. We go back to that place of, you know, we're learning self-care again. We don't you have know, I'm gonna, to. I'm going to ask you this question towards the end also about stretching and the importance of, of stuff like that. Because it just dawned on me that I remember one of the one of my favorite parts about your class that I literally loved and to this day I wish that I was still able to because even now when I go to the gym, it's not the same, but I take, I do still take some of the fundamentals that I can remember. Mm -hmm. But one of my favorite things about your class was the stretching part because yeah. I was like, man, no matter what I do, if I do it on my own, I'm not getting, you know, everything that we used to do and all the different stuff. And that was always in the beginning and the end. And it was, yeah. like you said, it was magical. And yeah. to me, that was one of my favorite parts outside of the workout because you did get such a, you know, a wonderful stretch that I felt like it and enhanced my performance for everything else for the rest right? of the week. Uh, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I, uh, I, I guess I, it's a little bit particular about my class. 
Uh, you know, you usually, if you go take a group class, a group fitness class, they take you through a, a you know, kind of like a cardio warm up, right? And, mm -hmm. and, you know, by the time you're done with that, you're half gassed, right? So to me, it's more important the stretch, right? Because it reduces injury, right? So uh, uh, it gets you into that, you know, set of mind of that uh, uh, mind body connection, right? Uh, it gets you into that, okay, so I got to breathe so that, you know, my muscles really respond. So when you're actually doing your kettlebell swings or when you're, you know, doing your, your core workout or whatever, you're going back to that breathing, right? To not forgetting, you know, and what do I say every, every yoga class, you know, don't forget to breathe. Don't hold your breath. What do we do when we do cr uh, crunches? Yeah. Yeah. And we don't breathe, right? So yeah. you know, that to me is just kind of creating the awareness immediately with, with, you know, a little bit of yoga and, and, and the stretch. And then at the end to again, get you back down to the sand uh, 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 and, and, and for you to start kind of soaking in the, uh, the endorphins and all that kind of joy that we get by doing our kid class or whatever we would be doing prior. Uh, uh, again, it gets you back to that relaxed uh, 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 mentality and, and um, a relaxed state rather. Uh, um, and, you know, that's why I love to, you know, the, the, the warm up for it to be yoga and the cool down for it to be yoga. I mean, that's, yeah. And and I'm glad that you liked it. I mean, I guess it works. That was one of my favorite <laughs> things. I was like, man, I am literally getting, you know, all of this benefit from that. And to this day, I know it's nowhere near the same, but I try to incorporate that at least before. And I don't have every single, you know, stretch that we used to do, but there are certain ones. And I remember watching somebody, I think last week, stretching in the gym that I go to now. And I was like, you know, if this part hurts, the way you do, like most people when they do the, you know, your knee down and you stretch forward, yes. you don't press forward with your back, you know, like kind of like, kind of raise your hips. Yeah. And I was like, you got to kind of like, you know, do it like this to be able to make that. And it's because I remembered it from the class. Right, right. It's a muscle memory. It never, yeah. it never goes away. <laughs> and then I knew when why it, it works. Felt that great. I mean, when it works for you, it stays with you forever. So I'm glad that at least, you know, if if not everybody out of that bunch, you know, at least you got a little bit of that benefit. <laughs> well, I mean, with that, I mean, I would, you know, I, I guess, are you doing, are you doing it virtually now? Yes. Um, well, I'm currently uh, teaching for several other companies. Uh, you know, like I was saying at the beginning, I'm trying to push my business and and work on my own dream. But I, uh, as I do that, I also have to make my money. So I work for different other companies that uh, now, ever since uh, COVID started, uh, we've been doing uh, Zoom, right? So uh, it was very hard at the beginning to do that transition to uh, from, you know, having that personal connection and uh, to the screen where, you know, you have, you know, people that won't turn the screens on. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know what they're practicing. Uh, also kind of that feeling of, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? How do I get the Zoom to work? Uh, and yeah. I'm, I've been it's an teaching adjustment. Class. something new to learn. Yes. My first classes uh, were muted. So I was just. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you know, back to what you were saying before, what you were doing before in person and what you can do now to even just think, um, I guess from, from the standpoint of this now, one way that I think it's a benefit is, you know, once you get down the actual technical stuff, you can affect so many other people. Definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, uh, my mom- Your reach is infinite. My mom lives in Argentina, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, she's been pushing for me to teach just like my husband, just like, you know, other people. Like, you know, when are you gonna teach in Spanish? When are you gonna send videos? So I I have a video posted uh, on Instagram and uh, it's uh, uh, just the song salutation is in, and it's in Spanish and uh, she was delighted, right? And-, uh, and At she, Anna Carol 2.0? No, that's the uh, uh, Contigo, yoga fitness 
Okay. This and one, this is my personal page, the one down there, that's my personal page where you will see my life and what I go period personal fitness or how, yes. to, how does oh, that go? there is a period. Let me um man, I should know my page. What's up with that? Contigo, you know how to spell contigo. You know what contigo yeah, means? That means with me. Yes, oh, with yeah. you. It, yes, it translates you. to Spanish. It's uh, with you. Yoga with contigo. You. So contigo, contigo dot yoga is with you. Dot. I'm sorry, conmigo is with me. Yes, with you. It's we'll see like when we're like contigo, conmigo. Yes, but I do yoga contigo. It's contigo dot yoga dot fitness, correct? Yes, that is it. That is my um my Instagram page, uh, my business. Um, there's not a lot. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's where my couple of uh, videos in Spanish. Uh, that's fine. Everybody look down below. Yes, that's it. That's that it. <laughs> and there's also my website. My website is on there. And uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to find all the links to all my other Instagrams because I have like a million. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I have my kids yoga page. I also teach kids yoga. And that's also amazing. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, what else? I don't know. What were we talking about? I'm just super excited. How you take it and how you've been able to take because of this uh, pandemic where a lot of people are feeling like they're disconnected. They can't get to the workouts. And now not only, so the other thing is, um, not only is it the, the, the gym's closed and everybody's been locked up, but now that it's time that we can come out, we can go back to the gym, people are feeling insecure because yeah. they've gained weight, you know, all these different things. So you can... You know, I think this is the way it may start. Maybe it starts that someone just, you know, wants to be able to work out from home because that's what they've gotten used to. Maybe they don't feel comfortable going to the gym. Then they fall in love with the class. They're like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. I hate the gym. I'm just going to keep on doing your class. And then boom. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and actually what, uh, you know, the the end result of it all would be just kind of having the, the channel where the the class is already pre-recorded right so whenever and and i think that's also the uh the uh awesome thing about teaching online right that uh, you can also record and have it there for you know 24 hours right if if you don't get to do your class early or whatever if you didn't get to go to the gym right mm -hmm. if you're a person that actually goes to the gym and doesn't really care about the mask thing or whatever uh you didn't go to the gym you can still come back home and uh, you know, you just get some yeah. yoga or get some fitness classes or whatnot. Uh, you know, but that's something I'm, I'm trying to expand also to, you know, just doing some meditation classes and you just something different. Right. Uh, yeah. There's there's always uh, if, you, if you think about it, um, what's that guy's name that everybody used to buy, like get the DVDs or insanity and uh <laughs> And the other um, guy from um, Shanti. The, the boxing, thing. yeah, Shanti. So, I mean, really, when you think about it, even Richard Simmons and all of them, yes. they may not have been teaching these classes um, virtually. They weren't technically teaching them virtually, but their videos, all these different yes. things, changed people's lives. Yeah, and you know, we think yeah. we think that we are reinventing. I mean, that we are inventing the wheel, but you yeah. know. The wheel has been there, and uh, I think that it's a slight different way to use it. Yes, with with COVID, I think we have been forced to navigate other ways to uh, um, how to make it work, you know, Those or maybe words. not not so much navigate, but you know, stop resisting, you know, yes. believing in that there is, uh, um, you know, there's getting out of routine and shaking things up. That there is a you possibility. To, you know, possibility yeah. of of you know just reaching someone out there uh that's that is my thing right now that i always gonna suffer you know that that imposter syndrome like ah are they really gonna want to click on my class i mean are they really do i make an impact do i is my class good you know I click on it. <laughs> oh, thank you uh, but yeah, it's always, you know, that fear that, and it's always us that we put our, you know, those barriers there. And uh, I have seen this year that I, you know, that the need has been there, you know, I need to get out and make money somehow. Right. And the best way that I know how to do it is teaching. And 
man, I got to teach online, right? Because the, the the company that I work for transitioned to online and they're offering me all the classes because everybody else, it's afraid of, oh my gosh, I don't never know how to use the Zoom thing. I was like, I, I don't know, but I'll take it. Yeah. And uh, you learn. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and that's all. You know, that's always been kind of my my deal. I, I I had to learn. I had to learn English. I've I've done it all. Uh, I did not mention this one to you, but I used to work with a friend of mine that owned a crime scene cleaning company. Or maybe you knew about this. No. Yes. I mean, I am a handy woman. I like to, you know, just besides working out and teaching and all that, I like to get my hands dirty and. And you know, just work later. I didn't know that because you you did the tough mutter. Yes, I uh, I run several mud races, uh, and it all started uh, um, after I got fit and I dropped that so much weight uh, by doing hit. That was kind of like my my fitness thing that I did for I want to say six months, and and you know, I I was a size big size thirteen or you know a nice size thirteen, and I shrunk to a size zero healthy zero uh fit zero that's, right? that's uh, um i mean i don't know women's sizes that well but that sounds like a huge difference it's a lot of difference um so you said a 13 yeah. to a zero yeah i was 100 and at my heaviest i'm five one so I'm, I'm shorty at my heaviest i was 152 pounds yes right now i am not size zero <laughs> uh, and I am 120 pounds, but I am fit and I have muscle. Yeah, so yeah. and muscle. I'm kind of like <laughs> because you know the pandemic. Let's blame the pandemic. Um, but yeah, uh, I uh, when I dropped that much weight, I was like, all right. So I've been lifting weights. I've been doing all this training. Uh, what's next? And mm -hmm. at that time, the uh, American Ninja Warrior was kind of like. You know, and uh, it's in this thing, and then Tough Mudder and Spartan races, and uh, I was also kind of trying to latch onto um, female. Uh, 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 um, what am I trying to say here? Like uh, somebody that I'm looking up to, right? And then, okay. uh, uh, um, an inspiration, right? Yeah. That was like I was, you know, in my because okay, so I'm feeling like. I'm getting into the sports. I'm getting into the. So you wanted to be the hero, or you had a hero? No, no, no. Like I wanted to just, I, I, I just wanted a female figure out there that I could relate to, or it's so like right? so someone like a role model. So then, or something. So then there was this uh, Spartan competition on TV, and there was this woman that uh, aimed, she happens to be like the champion of like everything and forever and ever. Like she is amazing. Uh, and I just saw her grit and I was like, I want to do that. I want to get in the mud and do monkey bars and, you know, just all the kids things that I used to do when I was a kid. Right. But do it now for fun, for running and not for money. Cause I, I hate running. Uh, I'm not really fast, uh, but I did train. I did 11 uh, Spartan races. Uh, several out of state. Yeah, several out of states. They are. So the first one uh, is uh, a 5K. Then you got a 10K. And then you have the half marathon, which is a 13 miler, right? That one's hell. I did that yeah. one. I did that one in Colorado. Oh my gosh. It was it was tough because it was up in the I mountain. couldn't breathe either. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. Uh, and I did several tough motors. Uh, those are great because they are uh, like uh, team oriented. Uh, Spartan is more like do it on your own, right? Uh, mm -hmm. in Tough Mudders is just like you run with your pack and you help each other. And uh, there are several obstacles that you do that you do by yourself, but most of the other ones, you know, somebody's got to help you up or, you know, it's just it's just fun stuff, right? And uh, but that but but that needs uh, some type of you know fitness, right? Um, and, uh, yeah, so again, I lost my train of thought because I just, well, love I mean, it. what I can say is <laughs> because I love anybody it. that's watching this, it'll be a true inspiration <laughs> to hear that you went from 
you know, a foreign country, I could just sum it up. Yeah, okay. But from a foreign country, came here, didn't speak, you know, the same language as the majority of everybody. Worked in a industry that is completely opposite to where you are now. Yeah. In, in the food industry. Yeah. Then, you know, go through the trip trials and tribulations of being a mom, <laughs> uh, you know, losing your job, then somehow navigating through to to chase your dream and your passion. Fall, well, actually, fall in love with, you know, just something that you tried out, then chase that as your passion. Yeah. And, you know, take it steps further to where you now have competed in these competitions, you know, all over the country. And I bet you, you know, thinking back, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago or whatever, that you would not have seen or ever thought that that, that, that would have been your life. <laughs> nope. I am. Uh, and then, you know, even none people of this like me. Was, none of this was really, you know, <laughs> inspiring me, helping me. Um, uh. All of the, the people that I brought, you know, every, everything from, you know, little Colby to yes. Mike and anybody else that, you know, I had come by there. Or I think I brought my sister before. I don't know if you remember Tall Jonathan. Yes. Uh, I everybody, everybody that came was just like, man. But the thing is, you it didn't matter if somebody had just started or had been doing it forever. You could relate to them. You could break it down. And it, one of the biggest things about you is you're very um, – you're very active with the, you're actually trying to teach someone where a lot of trainers are hands off. They just tell you, Hey, do this. Hey, do that. They're not really there with you. Right. You're there with everybody, every step of the way, watching, making sure that they're doing it right and very hands on. And that's, it, it's, it's, it stands out. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I think that's uh, how it really kind of sticks with people, you know, or like how you inspire people. That's kind of one of the things that, I guess that we always kind of strive to, right? Inspire someone else. How can I make an impact? And uh, having someone that made an impact in my life when I wanted to make changes, right? When I wanted to get fit and, uh, you know, see if I could take it farther, uh, then I, you know, I feel the need also to do it for, for other people and, and uh, you know, also push that, uh, um you know, because you, I can, I remember not having the confidence of, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't want to do that, or I, I'm not gonna be able to lift the weight, or you know, just and that's what I tell yeah, everybody. Little doubt, fear. Everybody of my students, you know, I break it down, and you know, you don't need to do a full push up, right? If you can, let's just modify, and, and it's always coming from a very compassionate um, place, you know, because. Mm -hmm. Compassion, I think that's what uh, makes somebody uh, uh, teach better and for that other person to receive better, you know, the information. And empathy. And empathy. I yeah. think now that I know some of your um, your history, I can understand why you come from such, a, such an empathetic and have so much passion towards it versus someone who maybe just got it to, you know, for money or, oh, this is fun or, you know, something like that. You truly want to change people's lives. Yeah. And, well, you know, and especially nowadays with all the social media things, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we all see, you know, the the girl that's selling the, the bands and then, you know, in three weeks, you're going to get a booty like this. No, girl. I mean, it takes about four years, you know, two years and you're going to start seeing results if you work at it, you know, really at it right uh, we start kind of uh, blinding ourselves with all these images and all these thoughts and then uh we're not really everybody realistic. wants everything quick we are not realistic and if anything i love to just bring you back down from your cloud and you know tell yeah. you to not run you know you need to walk first and uh, you mm -hmm. know, if your goal is to run a marathon, then you need to get your cardio up and we need to get yeah. you slowly there. Right. That's the thing that people want to skip steps and uh, not with me. We are going to. Yeah, they, they say slow progress is better than no steps. progress. <laughs> I think nowadays everybody just thinks that you can, you know, get rich overnight, get fit overnight, you know, turn into you know, whatever out of nowhere and just snap your fingers and that's not how it works. And um, yeah, even just the mentality doesn't happen overnight. So no, exactly. Yeah, it's it's hard. When we we're talking about it yesterday. It's hard to commit, you know, uh, and, and that's also something that that takes a lot 
uh, of willpower, you know, just committing mm -hmm. to something uh, either, uh, you know, to, and it's not a, you know, I'm going to just going to do this three months and be fit. It, you have to commit to a lifestyle, you know, and, um, you know, nowadays we just work out, work, work too much. Uh, we don't slow down. Uh, we are uh, overstimulated, right? Uh, yeah, and distracted. Where all the time something is, you know, on our mind, the phone, the likes, the TV, the politics, the, and, and we're not giving ourselves the time to, uh, you know, just kind of chill and, and, and um, just relax, come, you know, into a, a, a idle mode, right? We're always on the go, trying to step on the gas. And uh, that's well, something I need to work on. <laughs> it, well, you know, and I think that's why we had a lot of trouble adjusting with the pandemic with COVID mm -hmm. because we it was literally you just get hit the red light. Yes, it's we were forced to stop, slow down, and stay. Yeah, kind of like somebody was just putting us our hand, you know, a hand in your face and just stay there, right? And why? Because we are running away from our mind our problems, right? You know, I'm, I'm going to go work. I'm going to go put the overtime. I'm going to text, but I'm not going to sit quiet and, yep. you know, and, and go inside, right? And we were forced to do that. And, and I feel like the ones that were a little wiser utilized that time to go inside and, you know, just kind of start bringing the best and, and to, you know, in, in creating, you know, what can I create? What can I do now uh, that we're here at, you know, standing still and, and how can I make my dream happen now? Right. Uh, I guess. And actually think versus, you know, going back into that place of fear and doubt and scarcity, you know, actually just take a second to, to stop and, you know, allow yourself to think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, we don't do that enough and uh, we have to allow ourselves, uh, you know, that's why I'm, I'm like, I'm really happy that I'm teaching for DISD right now. I'm teaching yoga for uh, the teenagers. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can tell, you know, they are on camera. You can tell that, oh, you know, they don't want to do yoga. So, you know, I have to kind of go by what I see. So like, all right, so let's lay down and let's just chill let's just relax really are we just gonna lay here are you serious mm -hmm. yeah and just think about it when do those kids get a break when do those kids are allowed to not do something yeah. when are those kids just allowed to just be just lay down just you know many of those kids have to go back after school and work a part-time job to help at home Right. So imagine the generations that we're already bringing up that are already not taking their time for themselves, let alone us adults that we already went through all that. We're still not taking the time to, you know, just yeah. look inside and, and, and cope with ourselves. Right. Instead of, you know, reaching for the wine or reaching for the smoke or, you know, hey, I'm guilty of all that, you know. Again, because we don't want to face the reality, but again, you know, we face the reality. How you want? How do you want to apply it, right? And yeah. like I said, I mean, I, I personally just said, well, this is it. I, I gotta make some money. I gotta start doing something. I gotta start teaching. I gotta learn the computer. I'll take the classes. So here I am. I, I feel like I'm a total expert now at the Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> and teaching. But I mean, it took you just. You know, getting started. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, I, truly, I truly feel like I'm blooming, right? And and again, I feel like it's a collective bloom. Just like yeah. we felt, we fell into that collective stress of of the COVID and everything. I see again the collective bloom of everybody with their new businesses or the new ideas. Uh, you know, I think it's also been a blessing. You know, I mean, I feel really bad for the people that had passed away and everything but you know for the ones that are here we still got to keep thriving and keep trying and keep pushing and um and learn from you know just went through yeah definitely and are still going through definitely yes sir. so 
I guess, you know, with that, then for the maybe the person who's older or the mom that had a baby during the pandemic or person who's now gained weight that is afraid to go back to the gym or someone who has always wanted to was about to go to the gym and then the pandemic hit and then they couldn't go, someone who was an injury, whatever it is. I guess I would assume that one of the biggest questions that you get is, you know, I just don't know how to get started. What? How do you suggest someone get started how do on you the get journey started? that you did? Oh my gosh, that's kind of like the question. How do I get started? And everybody wants to get fit before they get started. Like I need to lose a little weight before I start working out. <laughs> um, right now, again, we have to have compassion for ourselves. Number one thing, right? Yes, we all gain weight. Uh, we it, we went to a very uh, traumatic experience. We're still yeah. going through it, right? So it, it is okay that we gain weight. It is okay that we got depressed. It is okay that we got into bad habits. But guess what? Come back to life. Life is happening again. So what is the best way to get you out there and get you active? Uh, well, summer is about to get started. Uh, the weather is so so, but hey, you know, just get to walking. Like right now, to me, that is the basic thing, right? Uh, I can tell you, hey, you know what? Just go get you a couple weights at Walmart and just do a couple bicep curls, and you'll be good to go. No, right? Uh, I just go for a walk. Start feeling comfortable again to moving, <laughs> moving, and kind of being around people and not looking at people like you know they're infected or like they're uh, suspicious or, you know, I, I do that, right? I see people and I'm like, mm, that person looks kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you know, we I haven't have seen to, people in so long. They all exactly. Look so weird. <laughs> we have to get out of that set of mind, you know, but again, we cannot run before we walk and literally, right? If right now we are in so bad of a shape, then just go for a walk, right? Uh, uh, if you have one of these things that count steps, uh, again, so the basic uh, rule is 10,000 steps. Uh, 10,000 steps, I think, is right around four miles. Uh, so it sounds kind of crazy, but if you're moving a lot, uh, you're going to accomplish it, right? So if you wake up early and you're up early, you're going to start moving early, right? Boom, boom, boom. Start creating new habits, right? Uh, start seeing, okay, well, you know, I feel tired because I go to bed at three in the morning. Well, you know, guess what? It's not pandemic time anymore. It's not super bad that, you know, we're staying at home all the time watching TV and we have no schedule anymore, right? So start getting again into uh, uh, some habits, good routine. habits, good schedule, just routines, right? The basics, very basic, right? Uh, wake up at a, a decent time if you're still working from home. I have some breakfast, uh, Maybe go for a five-minute walk from corner to corner. Nobody says to go and walk you a marathon, walk you three miles. No, right? If you're working from home and you're sitting at the desk, then might as well just put a thing on your, uh, an alarm every hour and a half. Boom, get up, 10 minutes. I'm going to walk around the block, come back, back to my computer, right? You know what I did? I got some... Um some resistance bands and just put them underneath the chair and I can, you know, do curls there. Yeah. And, you know, it sounds, it sounds silly and like how yeah. I get that, but you know, that thing, the QB or whatever, the, 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 ah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, some type of movement is better than no movement, right? right. That's true. Uh, YouTube, there's like a million free channels of movement, yoga, uh, fitness. But again, you know, just going for a simple walk, uh, uh, taking fresh air, uh, doing some mindful walks, uh, just some meditation, right? Meditation doesn't have to happen laying down, you know, like yeah. oh, mm, that's not meditation, right? That's what in that's what the internet says. You can go for a walk in meditation, just listen, listen to the birds, listen to the air, listen to the cars, listen, you know, just try to analyze how many sounds do you hear, right? Just Things like that that start getting you into a habit, right? Now, once you're in a habit, it takes it says what it, they tell you that 21 days uh, takes to it's build a new habit, habit yeah. right? So hey, 
you're going at it. It's day four. You didn't do it and then you forgot. Start all over again. It's okay. Forgive yourself. Yeah. Right? Because that's another thing that we're like, oh my gosh. Now I have to wait until it's the first on a Monday. <laughs> right? I no, that's true. That's there true. are people that does the whole thing. I know yeah. I got to wait until the month starts on a Monday and in the first and that's the day. I believe if you're going to start a diet, if you're going to start a, a workout regime, if you... It's pointless to say, oh, I'm going to start tomorrow. No, yeah. start now. Because if right now you're not committed, and that's another big word in my vocabulary here, uh, if you are not committed, you're not going to go tomorrow. Yeah. Play mm -hmm. this role. You are that is, not. That's so true. <laughs> you are not going to go tomorrow. Tomorrow you're going to be like, oh, man, I overslept. Or you're going to snooze. You're going to be like, oh, I said at 6, but, you know, 6.15, I'm still good. Now it's eight in the morning. Oh, shoot. I got to get up. I got to shower. I got to get in the computer. You lost an hour of your day, 10 minutes of walking, whatever, right? So new and usually when you wait, you actually end up finding another excuse to push it off the next day or the next week or the next month. Yes. So and it, it the best thing of, literally is to force it to just, you know. Yeah. Part of also starting is, is starting with that mentality of, I'm going to commit myself, right? Um, I want to say I'm going to commit myself to eat better, right? That doesn't mean I'm not going to eat chocolate cake. I'm just not going to eat chocolate cake three nights a week. You know, yeah. I, I do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. There's this place that has this amazing chocolate shake, um, cake. Anyway, um, so, you know, it's just, about the, 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 the moderation and cutting back exactly, slowly. Exactly. Yeah. And if one day, one week, you decide to eat three pieces of chocolate cake, that's okay. Right. Maybe you yeah. needed it. You needed it. So, again, just having compassion, you know, it's compassion, committing to yourself, uh, uh, starting new habits, drink some water, drink water. Yes. Got my water right here. Uh, so I, I'm gonna get back to you on the um, the question that we had earlier. The importance of stretching, and I wish that someone would have told me that a long time before I got multiple injuries. So, can you expand on why it's important to stretch? And I know you do it in a form of yoga, but you know what is the importance of that, and you know why? Do you need to take the time? We used to do it in your in your class before and after. Yeah. So well, why? so we know how the body deteriorates, right? Without movement, right? If we're sitting all the time, our muscles shorten, right? They get they get short. And then when it's time to stretch, then that's when we feel pain, right? Uh, um the 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 importance of it, like uh, uh, and this is just from a very personal uh um stand. It's the, the risk of injury, right? That's, uh, to me, that's kind of like the biggest uh, uh, and most important part of it, right? Because sometimes- People, people think that it's not going to happen. Uh, you just, yeah, you're you're know, used to being a kid and just running and doing whatever. They say, oh, I'm going to be fine because I'm strong. Yeah. Uh, a strong uh, does not relate to flexibility at all, mm -hmm. right? It, it's total different uh, realms here. And if you don't, uh, um, oh, I see that. We will give you information here in a little while. I'm getting excited. I get this heat in my body when somebody asks that question. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so. And I, would, and I would love to also join the class as well. Like I said, this is one of my favorite classes ever. So. Yay, we're going to do it. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if Pamela is out in Dallas. Is she around? She's Can in I Houston. And I think Ooh. that's why I'm one of. One of her things has been, uh, you know, actually having the time to go to the gym. And what we were talking about is, you know, you can do it right from your own home now. Yep. Oh, and and, 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 and you know that my body, uh, my body weight workout, it's it's a workout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, going back to that stretching, I think, yeah, it's it's very important. Why? Because to begin with, we're talking about the tendons, right? And that's where most of the injuries tend to happen, right? When we're lifting and we're not stretching them enough and they're short, when we're not moving, 
right? Uh, so from the from the the um, risk of injury, um, it's mm -hmm. really important mm -hmm. to stretch, right? Uh, uh, and and also stretch the fascia, not only doing the yoga stretches or the the gym stretches that you know we used to do at gym class, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also that foam rolling, right? Yeah. It's very important to stretch your fibers uh, uh, in order for your muscles, your articulations to work better. Right. Uh, I have noticed myself that uh, when I don't roll my shins, like all this part right here, my mm -hmm. squats suck because my ankle flexion is not where it's supposed to be. Right? I was just going to say, I think that the stretching also improves performance. Definitely. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, th that's the one that's related with the other. Right? I mean, it's all related. Right. Yeah. Uh, 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 but the stretching part, I mean, that's why uh, NFL and in in everybody now it's it's bringing you like a mandatory team. thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because they and also, be, uh, you know, besides the, the, the mindful part of it is because the, the risk uh, they're, they're trying to lower the risk of injuries. And mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you now because I am going to start teaching for one of the high schools here for the football team. Uh, as part of their uh, um, training camp for the summer. So it's really awesome that, yeah, and it's really awesome that, uh, uh, you know, they're, they, they are acknowledging that yoga is, uh, it, it was going to give you, you know, a well-rounded uh, form of uh, workout, right? It's going to help you stretch. Uh, you've done yoga. Yoga gives you some cardio, Right. Uh, uh, the, the stretches that you get, uh, the risk of injury is going to be uh, a minimum, right? Because the range of motion is going to improve. You know, range of motion, it's super important in every sport, right? You throw the ball, you know, or you're going to catch or you're going to, whatever it is, your range of motion, you're squatting, you're, you know, moving in different mm -hmm. planes, right? Being able to move sideways, backwards, front, right? If you don't have that coordination, if your muscles don't work right, uh, again, if your flexion is not there, um, you know, the, 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 again, the injury is, you know, your body's going to be more prone to injury, right? I, I just think it's, it was amazing, the, the effects even just like you you mentioned you know not even from the the mental aspect but that's something that people don't realize is that it really does have a mental effect on you to, to prepare you for what you're about to do and then when you're done calming you down from what you just did yeah yeah it's um you know i usually use the analogy of of you know the being flexible right uh, a lot of people tell me well you know i don't pra practice yoga because i can't touch my toes I'm not flexible enough. I got to get flexible first in order to do yoga, right? That's the thought. But then I started to get them to think, okay, so let's try something, right? And I'm going to try it right now. I want everybody to kind of get what I'm saying. So I tell everybody, right? So I can't touch my toes, right? So bent your knees, bent your knees, bent your knees. Can you touch your toes now? I am touching my toes. So yes, you can bend, you can touch your toes, right? And with that, what I'm saying is that if your mind is flexible, your body will become flexible. Your body will adapt, right? Uh, um, uh, we always tend to, again, want to it's run, want yeah. to run before we walk, right? Uh, we want to stretch and be able to touch the toes. But the body doesn't want to do that, right? The body wants to do it at its own pace, right? Yeah. The body does not want us to rush it, right? So we have to honor the body. And that is when the whole thing with the yoga and the body and the mind, right? If you go to a yoga class or any yoga class would start, you would hear this thing, uh, honor your body. Let your body tell you where to go right if i'm here and i cannot stretch more because i have i know i hurt my shoulder oh but you know what the guy over there can actually bring his arm higher so now i'm gonna try and then you get hurt guess what that was your ego telling you 
you got to look like that guy, right? But if you're here and you're breathing and then you come back the next day and you're breathing, oh, you're going to find that maybe you're starting to move a little more, but you're giving it time. You're allowing yourself. You're not competing with anybody, right? So that's when the it, it starts coming into your mind and then it's going to start affecting your performance because when you're doing your squats or if you're uh, doing uh, you're do, uh, in a, a basketball game or whatever, you're going to go into that set of mind of like, I'm okay. You know, I got this. I'm not going to rush. I'm right. So you, know you, start, in you, start yourself, seeing, really? you start seeing the pattern without anybody telling you that, oh, this is what yoga is going to do for you today. Oh, and tomorrow you're going to feel this way. Oh, and the next day. You, you don't see a progression with yoga. With yoga, is just like slowly starts uh, 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 sipping into your life and your mind and your body, and it just changes you. And it, 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 uh, if you're an athlete, it enhances your performance. If you're a an average Joe, it would enhance your performance at being the best average Joe ever that will be able to stretch. I mean, it's just uh, uh, the expansion of your mind. It's amazing once you let yoga work right mm -hmm. there are times when we resist i've been practicing yoga for years and there are days when i'm resisting and i want to like really balance and my balance is off you know and again it's not my body it's my mind that is out of balance right it's yeah. not it's not yeah. A yeah. right i don't say sometimes we even compete with a different version of ourselves and we can't do that. So yeah. if you yeah, want to I be, mean, be fit from before and then now you're not, or you know, as we as, as we as we yeah. age, right? Oh, I was able yeah. to do that before, or I was able to do it before the pandemic. Well, guess what? Yeah. Today you can't, and it's okay, yeah. right? Yeah. Sometimes we need to be told that it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so uh, the mind is powerful. Yes, it is. It's very true. That's something I, I definitely have learned throughout the pandemic, how powerful your mind is. And yeah. Perspective is huge. It takes it you change to your, life. It can change your life. It could take you to very dark places. And, yeah. uh, and then you can also pull you out of those dark places. Yep. So, you know, the mind is incredible. Gotta, so, feed, gotta feed it the right things, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, the last question I have for you is I know you're – you know, certified HIT instructor. Can you tell us what HIT is and why it's one of the best forms of working out? HIT, HIT, uh, the letters H I I T, high intensity interval training. Um, that's what it is. It's a time where you split your exercises into intervals. Um, because it is believed, and I believe it, and it's a scientifically uh, scientifically proved that when you push your body uh, for a certain amount of time uh, at full speed, um, and you do that for several intervals, uh, your body is going to go into a crazy overdrive, and we're going to start burning a whole bunch of calories. More than the steady pace. Yeah. Yes. And it's uh, it, it's short. Uh, there are uh, two. There are several different styles where you know you can do hit. Uh, the most common um, um, things to do with that with that is that Tabata, T A B A T, uh, which uh, was invented. That was the guy's last name. I don't know his his first name, and I believe it was Japanese. Um, yeah. Doctor Tabata. Yeah. Um, and if anybody can actually Google it, uh, you will actually find out that that is true. Uh, he invented that uh, interval thing, the 20 minute work, the 10 second rest, and we do it for a four minute cycle, right? So uh, in, in a, a hit class, we do, uh, you can do between five, actually any, any amount of intervals that you want to. Uh, perform right depending on how long you want your class to go but it usually what the uh the, the the average time is a 25 to 30 minute class and that's all is required really to get your body to really uh burn fat 
So our workout time in your class, the actual time where you're like working out, was that about 30 minutes? It was about 45 because that we would have the the kind of like the first five minutes of but without the stretch. You know, we're gonna go through the stations and we kind of warm oh, okay. up and, yeah, yoga. The but the actual actual uh, um, Tabata, it would it would be six cycles of four minutes. So it's 24 minutes, right? Yeah, and, 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 we and were... between between each Tabata, between each four minute uh, uh, interval, there's a, a full minute rest. And so we for four <laughs> minutes, for four minutes, you work your butt off two different exercises. Let's say squats and deadlifts. Uh, we do 20 minutes. All you got squats, right? It can be weighted squats, uh, body weight, whatever. Uh, then the timer is going to go off. You rest for 10 seconds and then you switch exercises to that, to the deadlifts, right? And then you do deadlifts for 20 seconds and then you're switching back and forth for four minutes, right? And then once that's up, you rest one minute and then you move to the next set of exercises that might be, I don't know, core, whatever it is uh, uh, intended for that day, right? I mean, it can be just a hit um, cardio class. It can be a hit uh, uh, strengthening class. I mean, it, but the just thing is that you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna work it in, in four minute intervals, right? In each four minute interval, you can also do AMRAPs, uh, the A-M-R-A-P, which is as many reps as possible, right? So that's when you have uh. no rest. We have absolutely no te 10 second rest. Say we have 10 bicep curls, 10 bicep curls, and then 10 overheads, and then 10 bicep curls, 10 overheads for full four minutes, right? So you are putting your muscles into stress, right, in a short amount of time. Very effective. It burns fat, um, obviously, with the right combination of diet. And by diet, I do not mean um, I'm kind like of sick where it's like, or like the, two weeks. the South Beach diet or whatever. Yeah. Diet you mean a lifestyle me, change? Diet for me is what you eat. I mean, that's yeah. it. Diet is what you eat. So if you have a well rounded diet with fruits, veggies, fiber, uh, if you count your macros, it is four minutes. Well, four minutes is long. It can feel 24 minutes. And I it always, I remember encouraging <laughs> if you if you puke, that's okay. That means it's working. You should feel that way. It, it's kind of like a like a CrossFit class, not not on steroids, but it's it's kind of like a CrossFit class. And uh, Man, I remember having you going up and down the stairs and push-ups and <laughs> I used to really try to push myself in there though. Man. I mean it's uh I, I, mean, I can feel the benefit, I can tell the benefit of the class, everything that we were doing, and I was like, Man, this is great. I want to push myself to be, you know, the best, but not in competition with anybody, but like literally I knew I could be my best me. Exactly. Yeah. And then again, the next Wednesday, we would meet up again. And then, okay, we got burpees again. Oh, my gosh. Right. And then maybe you were the one that would think, oh, you know, I did uh, maybe 10 in 20 seconds. Maybe this time I'm going to push it and do 12 or, you know, and that's kind of the mentality that we start getting into when um, types of workouts like this, when, when you do it in a group setting, that you feed yeah. from everybody's energy. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I don't know if you got to go the time that it, I did the uh, partner workout. When we actually, it was it was two that were, you know, at the same time, you know, we're actually. I believe so. I think I, I think I had Mike as my partner. And so, then sometimes we had like groups of three because we had so yeah, many because people. Because it was sometimes. like different stations. Yeah. But uh, there were times that I did just a workout where it was like just with your partner so you know we did planks like slapping hands mm -hmm. and you know just things like that but then you get people you know that you know again they're motivated that you know you feel like oh my gosh we're all dying at the same time yeah right and, and then really at dying. the end of class it's so amazing and and you feel alive and you feel revived and and you know, yeah. you, can, you cannot wait to do it again. I mean, as much as you were dying and as much as you were hating me with the burpees and all that, you couldn't yeah. wait for next week. And and that's when you when the workout is, is um, effective, right? So I'll let you tell them my success story, too. I don't oh. have, but you can tell them. 
That success story. So Nick had a shoulder injury. And yeah. uh, so he had been going to yeah. my class and, and doing the little yoga that we do and whatever. So one day he's, you know, talking about uh, we we're doing pull-ups, I think. Uh, because in my class we do pull-ups <laughs> even if they're they're assisted we're gonna do pull-ups um and yeah we're talking about doing muscle ups and pull-ups and my friend over here was able to pull his muscle up so i mean that was a proud moment there's a video of that if you do not yeah. believe it we will post that, that. was really happy too <laughs> but uh, it came out like three times and they're telling me like a doctor and all that oh you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I feel it today. And yeah. I got up there and then I just. <sighs> and again, like, and it's just oh is the gosh. way again that you engage your body and how to move, you know, again. And the, the stretching that we did, yeah. And if you were making that connection, right, the shoulders back and down and everything with the mm -hmm. mind and your body and all that muscle memory, then that's how you were able to accomplish. So, yay. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Muscle crazy. up. <laughs> so now the question is, can you still do a muscle up? Nope, not after the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> not right now. But like you said, slowly but surely. Yeah. You cannot join. What do you mean you can't join? Well, yeah, why can't you join? I'm sure you can. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm pretty soon I'm going to be posting up a link for for a class through Zoom. So whoever is watching right now and want to join will be able to join. Yes. 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 Uh, I'll, I'll be joining. And yeah. I'm sure you'll be joining too. And it's a virtual, the virtual class. Like I said, um, well, we had the request early. So I guess, I mean... I would like to thank you for coming on anyway. And for those wondering when the classes will be, how they can attend the class, you know, you're located in, in the Dallas area. Yes, but, I, know, I, am in, I am in Plano, Texas. Uh, but again, online is everywhere. So uh, through your channel, I guess, like through Facebook, I will be able to post some links there for anybody yep. who would like to join and uh and this will also be on on youtube so ah, like say it can be international like there might be some yes. whatever reason like my other channel is big in turkey and i mean you never know there could be people in turkey just now all of a sudden you know working out to your video so hey you know and and get inspired that's uh that's yeah. the thing that's the thing that's what we want to accomplish do good things with the internet Right. Another thing, too, you know, I think it's also exciting because although, you know, for instance, you're talking about being everybody being together and in person and, and feeding off each other. Now, the fact that everybody's at home doing these workouts, um, I think it's it's pretty cool that you can hey, do mom. these workouts with your family. <laughs> That's my and mom then, right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey, mommy. Her, her name's Luna. My mom. Yes, that's my mom, yes. Luna. She, uh, she's in Argentina right now. Ah, yeah. Hello. International. We're going international. <laughs> yes, your, your, your daughter beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I beat her up. But I think now, though, like, you know, people's families, if they, they may not have been able to work out with their family members or whatever, now the families at home may be inspired because they're able to see, um, you know, everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, like I said, I've been teaching my um, DISD classes with uh, on Saturdays for uh, um, the family yoga, and you see a lot of people tuning in uh, uh, in the same household, right? Uh, so and it's hard to ignore that, and then people want to join in too, and then it becomes all right, fine, I'll do it. I'll, 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 what, what time is that class again? And then you know, I'll next thing you know, everybody in the house is doing. It. Yeah, you know, and, and, you know, just try something new. It's, why not, right? What do you have to lose? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And Never everybody is able to fit, feed off of each other and come together, you know, and, and it just brings people closer anyway. So uh, you may find that, you know, how you found when you first started doing yoga that it inspired you and you're like, man, I want to do this forever. It, it could definitely do the same thing for someone else. So. Yes, definitely. I am all about inspiring. So all those inspired, follow me. Let's work out. Let's do yoga. 
Let's All right. Say. Well, Namaste. so one more time, when are you going to be, uh, when are you posting these classes and, and how do people get in contact with you? Well, let's say uh, ASAP, uh, I guess as soon as I click up here, I'm going to make a link to get somebody started right away in a yoga class. So um, and share that with me and then we'll put that in, in the hey, description below. You, and everything, so. you are my guinea pig and uh, Contigo Fitness, uh, ContigoYogaFitness.com. That's my website, and uh, I believe somewhere around there was my uh, Instagram. Hey, Nicole, I see you out there. We're going to be doing the class. You know, get your mom, get your dad, get my mom, too, everybody. Yes. And, also, and we're going we're gonna to start doing this. Also, if you are in the, the Dallas or Plano area, I'm going to start going to, uh, you know, random places out there, Yeah, uh, you know, throwing some classes, putting classes together, fitness classes and yoga classes. So, you know, oh, who is that? I cannot see a face, but uh, that's going to be your biggest fan right there. Oh, mm, my daughter. But yeah, so we're, um, you know, that that's what I'm all about right now. Just start giving and getting to getting people to know me and getting people to see that I give results and uh, I deliver. Definitely. I definitely, deliver. definitely. I, <laughs> and and the, the other part is you're very, um, like I said, personal with people and you're able to give the different levels. If someone can't do this, you do that, you do that. It's not just, you know, do it, push you. You're really um empathetic thank you thank with you all of your clients so yeah definitely again i think the world needs a lot of that and uh i have a lot of a lot of that to give so come work out with me well it's, it's a great thing that you were able to find your passion and be able to, to bestow that onto other people because you can you know really make that change because you are so passionate about it definitely i, I truly enjoy it i uh i really thank you for giving me the space today no, well, I, I appreciate you, you know, coming on in such short notice. And uh, everybody that's following, I mean, you know, watch right now. If you look down below, you can see follow at Anna.Carol2.0. That's you can also it. Follow that the, is, uh, that's my contigo. yoga. That yoga contigo. fitness. Yoga Contigo. And then also there is, what is it? Uh, contigo Yoga, yoga Shop Kids. Com. Yes. <laughs> yes, that one right there, too. <laughs> Hey, we are, learning. We got all we are learning as we go with this marketing stuff. So at least I yeah. am. <laughs> and all of the all of the all of the descriptions and everything where you can follow and find out where the classes are, when they are, they're gonna be all in the description. I'll be in attendance, so this won't be the first time you see or the last time you see both of us. So um y'all go ahead and make sure to follow. Please subscribe, follow. whatever it is. <laughs> you may also be coming with a YouTube channel sometime soon. <laughs> You're gonna push me to do that too. Oh my god. I am. So I yeah. encourage anybody to start, I, right? Yeah. Um I think that's gonna start happening soon. Okay. Yes, it's gonna happen. Well, if you need any help, I'm here. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to make the commitment right now here live in front okay. of millions of people on the internet. <laughs> I like how you manifested that just a while ago. Yes, yeah, it's gonna okay. blow up millions. It's, it's, it's time to do it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no better time than the present. Just gotta start, right? Yep, yep. And I mean, hey, it's honestly it'll be a lot easier too, since you're already gonna be doing the Zoom class recorded, then you already got the footage. Definitely. Yeah, it's just again the the, the barriers that we put on ourselves. Yeah. I guess I, I guess believe in you. I'm ready to just say they're gone. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in you and I appreciate, you know, what you've done for me and, and uh, you know, helping me in my fitness journey as well as all the other people I've seen you inspire and how you interact with the people that I've been able to, uh, I guess, also introduce to you because I knew what you did for me and I wanted them to get the same thing. So, you no, know, and I'm talking about, you know, we're talking about grown right. men, big dudes, little oh, everything. And everybody's just like, <laughs> Forever, forever grateful seriously uh, uh it means a lot to get awesome feedback always and and again yeah. like thank you so much for for giving me the time the space to just ramble about what i love the most and uh yeah i'm, I'm ready i'm ready to get well, everybody your story. 
Danny, yes. So it's definitely yes. been an amazing journey and it's an inspiring story to hear, you know, everything that you've overcome in life. And it just goes to show that, you know, we're all capable and your story may, you know, now inspire someone else who, you know, doesn't have a clue where, you know, that the path is going to take them. Like you said, you navigate through depending on what's going on instead of just sitting back and being like, oh man, I can't believe this happened. Stay persistent, have a good heart, you know, do so, the right thank thing, you. do the right thing. And that's it. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you so Getting much. Hearts now too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, people. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to basically, I'm going to end the broadcast for the live, but I'm going to ask you to stay on because we got to take a thumbnail picture and then that's that. So everybody wow. else, good night. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, see you in the <laughs> next one. And hopefully see you in the, in the Zoom class working out with us. Conmigo. Quiero hacer yoga contigo. <laughs> Again. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, we got one more comment. No. Uh, my Luna, is that it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my biggest fan right there. Love you, Mama. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in.